When we speak about the second president of the Republic of Kenya, there is a question that a lot of Kenyans always ask. What happened to the first lady during the time of President uh, Daniel Torutich Arab Moy? Now allow us today, as Celeb Kona KE, to take you back to the days of the former president and the second president of the Republic of Kenya, President Dan Daniel Torutich Arab Moy. And how he succeeded to make the first lady back then to disappear from the public limelight. And what really led to the divorce between Moi and his wife. Because that matter was a matter that uh, remained to be a matter of public interest for a very long time. Until when Moi exited the presidency. So, what really happened between Moi and Lena Moi? Lena Moy is regarded to be the first lady of Kenya that was forgotten by the people of the Republic of Kenya. But how did she got forgotten? For 24 years that Moy reigned as president, with an eye on feast, his ex-wife Lena Tungo was actually seen in public. Was I, I mean hardly seen in public. Even when Moi's children were doing church weddings, Lena was kept away and watched the ceremony on Kenya Broadcasting Corporation, KBC Television, like a stranger to her children. That was unlike the woman who loved publicity in the 1960s and 70s and would grace many occasions alone or with Kenyatta's cabinet minister and vice president Daniel Toro Itij Arab Moi. Now, Lena's departure from the social and political scene in mid-1974 after the collapse of a marriage surprised many people. In 1979, months after Moy was sworn in as president following the death of Jomo Kenyatta in August 1978, Lena was officially taken through the motions of divorce and she faded away into oblivion. At her El Damaravino home, Security agents constantly watched Lena, and she kept herself busy with church matters as an ardent member of the local African Inland Church, the AIC. At the AIC, the young Elena Bomet, as she was known, had met the young, tall, and handsome orphan boy, Moy, who had been brought to seek shelter while attending a local school. Moi's home was 160 kilometers away, and rather than go home, he stayed with the family of Isaiah Chesire, and he hobnobbed with some of Chesire's children, including former nominated member of parliament Zipporah Kitoni and former Eldoret North member of parliament Ruben Chesire. He would also be hosted by the Australian family of Albert Barnett, a missionary who had left Australia in 1907. Believing that God had called him as a missionary to Kenya and who was instrumental in the spread of the African Inland Mission in the Rift Valley, Barnett lived among the Tugin in what is today Cabernet before settling at El Dama Ravine. So popular was the Barnett family that they had a town named after them, Cabernet. It was this family which was instrumental in shaping Moi's early life. Moi had taken off on their mission, hoping to get an education. The students would, walk, would wake up at 6 a.m., work in the vegetable gardens, and haul gallons of water from the river to the station in the afternoon. They would sit in Barnes Swedish home, Eldama, to learn uh, numbers. Now, the, Barnett and, the Barnetts made Moy the Sunday school teacher at an early age as they encouraged him to take a leadership role in the church. By 1942, he was the school captain of the government school with Paul and Eric Barnett as his peers, the two missionary sons of Albert Barnett. Now, Paul later baptized Lena when he started a working as a missionary and also helped Moy to build his first house where he occasionally slept as he opened more schools and churches in the Rift Valley. Talaka Yamze Moy. Now, 
we are speaking about the divorce. Now uhusiano wa Moi na Lena ulianza wakati ule Moi akiwa mwalimu katika shule ya Tabachu. Kama mwalimu mkuu na Elena kwa wakati ule akiwa kama mwalimu chini ya uongozi wa Moi. They were both teachers in the same school. Na ujumba wao ulitiwa sahihi mwaka hifadhi na moja baada ya Moi kurejea kijijini kutokea Kagumo Teachers College alipokuwa ameenda kwa ajili ya masomo. That means their, their marriage was officiated in 1951. That is after Moi returned back at the village from where he was studying in eh, Kagumo Teachers College. Eh, Moi's devotion of religion and he devoted his life to religion and he never missed Sunday Sunday church services. And was startling with the marriage now Lena Abado Dakari as a teacher and he must serve into bringing up a family settling down with Moi at Tabach government school where his first two children Jennifer and Jonathan Kipkemboi were born in 1952 and 1953 respectively those who absorbed with Moi in the 1950s thought he would make an excellent preacher perhaps following the trails of his mentors the Barnett family but Moi like liked teaching more than anything else things took a new twist for Lena in 1955 when she a husband was appointed to the colonial legislative assembly the legico to replace the inefficient John Oleta Tameno and as a representative for the expansive Rift Valley by then he had bought a land a land drove and opened a portion mill in South Baringo and read the then settled with his new bride and he started crisscrossing the Rift Valley as the region's senior most politician at the height of the emergency. Now, the quiet teaching life that the couple had anticipated was gone as Moi moved off the school compound with his family for Nairobi. He was now dressed in suits and ties rather than the shorts and long socks that had been his trademark as a teacher. Early photos of the Moi family with their with their first children show a remarkable handsome man well groomed and seemed to be a man of the family now but moi's political relationship with these in-laws was not always at its best the fallout with the bomet appear to have started in the 1961 election when his brother-in-law eric bomet stood against him as an independent candidate in the general election it was not personal it was a matter of principle eric would later say although eric would enter parliament as a specially elected member on a kanu ticket it was moi's kanu that carried the day eclipsing kanu in the region as moi was on the move in pre-independence politics lena became a housewife in an interview in 1967, she said it was necessary that the children were cared for by their own mothers if they were to grow up mentally and physically healthy. And she, I quote her, she's equally assiduous about looking after her husband. She enjoys her cooking and only eats outside the home when he has to. Now, veteran journalist Faraj Dumilo, who conducted the interview, wrote, Moi would also Remark, I hope how much of my success in the service of my people, my country, she has always been an encouraging factor in all aspects of my political life. But with his life immersed in politics and fast life, Lena and Moi fell apart, and Moi moved out to Kabarak, where he had another farm. By leaving Lena at El Dama Ravine, Moi raised his children without a mother, and whenever they had a wedding, he would make sure she was nowhere. Why? That, now that is that is where another thing happens. Let me tell you, Moi was your narcissistic type of boyfriend that you have if you have ever been in a narcissistic relationship. Moi curtailed, or let me say, he shadowed Lena. Do you know the wife to to Moi, Lena Moi, after their divorce? and she got what she uh, she got the, the life that she was given by moi but she was put 
Underwood. Huyo mama aliwekwa on the public scrutiny or, or, or under the military scrutiny. Hmm? It is like she was put under house arrest by the, the former president of the Republic of Kenya. And since 1979, when this man became the president of Kenya, until the year 2002, when he exited the public eye, that woman was never seen again in public. Yani, wanajeshu walikuwa na mlinda uyu mama, akitoka labda atoke, akienda sokoni kununua vitu zake, ama akitoka, atoke, aende akafanye vitu, akiwa naenda kanisani. Now the woman got used to it because even the children themselves were warned against associating themselves with their mother. Are you getting the point? Until a point came when now Moy was old enough to allow those that feel like they want, they want to go to see their mother, they can go and do that. Are you getting the point? So when you speak about the former president being a dictator of, uh, I mean, of this country, you have to revisit this story back to his family. You have to go to the Moi's family. You know, Moi amassed um, a, a, an estimated wealth of right now about 300 billion. But he made sure that his first wife, Unajua inasemekananga also, there was a contributing factor that led to Moi parting ways with his wife. A dance that happened between Lena Moi and Mze Jomo Kenyatta. Uh, the dance between Moi's wife and Mze Jomo Kenyatta, which is believed to uh, and rumored to be uh, to be uh, how can I put it? It's rumored to be the cause of what might have led mm, uh, to, to the separation between Moi and Elena. Now, I will take you to, 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 to a certain article that was written. Back in the days, the ballroom dance that ended Moi's wedding. Mm? Kenyatta, it was just a normal event. But Kenyatta decided to have a dance with Moi's wife, then his deputy. Before the official divorce that happened in the year 1979, it is believed that Moi and Lena parted ways back in the year 1974. And that is in a dinner dance that happened. The marriage was finally broken in 1974 by a single event during a dinner dance at Rift Valley Technical College, which was graced by President Jomo Kenyatta as the chief guest. A story is told of how Moi danced with the former First Lady Mamangina Kenyatta, while Lena was expected to dance with President Kenyatta. But being a staunch Christian, Lena believed dancing was sinful. And so she turned down Kenyatta's invitation, thus humiliating her husband, Moi. It is believed that this is where Moi, so you know, these are, these are men that believe, once I say something, So once, Kudans Namze, and you know Mze was the president, and this man was his, de his deputy president, his vice president. So Moi believed and trusted Kenyatta. He loved Kenyatta even for giving him the position of becoming the vice president. So he did not want to leave anything or to risk anything in his political, in his shining political career, and that is where everything bro broke loose. So in uh, the marriage collapsed in uh, and a divorce followed in 1979 by then Len, uh, Len, Lena had already faded away from the public arena never to be heard of again until her death in the year 2004 now their 25 year marriage bore them seven children 
Jennifer, Jonathan, Raymond, Philip, Doris, John, Mark, Gideon, and an, ado and an adopted daughter by the name of June. June Moy, who died a few months ago. But now looking at it, it is believed since then, in 1979, you know, now Kenyatta has passed, Moy is the president of the Republic of Kenya. He believed that if this woman is given just you know, you see it, Lena Likwa Mjinga. She was learned. She was learned. And so, she would even have taken the advantage of that and even go ahead to seek a political seat. You know, we can compare this to that of Mwai Kibaki. Look at Mwai Kibaki and Wamboi. Wamboi Kibaki. The, second, the one who was believed to be the second wife. You know, Kibaki aliacha Wamboi ahende. And Wamboi went ahead to seek the parliamentary seat of Odaya to replace Kibaki. Na alipata hiyo kiti, 20, I think it was in 2013 and 2017. That is when she got the seat, akakuwa member of parliament wa Odaya. So, if Kibaki, remember, that is when Kibaki left the scene as the president, is when Wamboi got a chance to run and win. But before hiyo, alikuwa nazuiwa. She would not get the, the, the approval to run for that seat. But after Kibaki exited, she ran and won. So it is the same thing for Lena Moy, Lena Tugomoy. If she was given a freedom, Angenda, a, 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 a run for, for a certain seat, na akuje, ashinde. And if she would have gotten some certain level of authority, then she would have exposed Moy. She would have tarnished the name of President Moy. And Moy was a dictator. Remember that. So anything that would come between him and his presidency, he had to quash it. And quashing it meant divorcing this lady and putting her under house arrest. Hmm? That, was an, th th that is one thing. You, if you, if you, you read the history of these two people, you will understand where ilifikia aji apa. Even after her death, she was to be buried at her home in, Lenda, eh, at, in Eldama Ravine until Moi made a last minute decision to have her buried in Kabarak, a place she had not slept. Yeah, Moi alikuwa meka tauma, there is Ziziko Kabarak. Remember the Kabarak home, dio, the, the Moi family home. Unanielewa, hapo hata ndiyo mwili ya mze Moi meziko. Man, if you look at the history of this, this, this marriage between Moi and Lena, you will realize a lot of things that were hidden from the public back in the days. Eh? A president putting his wife under house arrest. Hmm? Did you know that? Have you even ever thought about it? Eh? For the 25 years or 24 years that they were in, uh, that Moi was in, in leadership, he made sure that that lady never sees the light. She, she, you know, you are, ata ange patatu na fasi ya kuingia onge na media. Eh, his story inge chafua rais kagasia. But Moi did not want that. And he protected his presidency at all cost. Una get? Until mpaka kwa marriages za watoi wake, weddings, awa watoto, au uyu mama ange udhuria. Ala me ask. How controlling was Moi that, yeah, unambia watu hii, your mother will not. And I have been, sija kubali mama yenu wa attend wedding zenu. Yes, she is your mother, yes, I accept that. But she won't attend your weddings, I tell you. Eh? Hapo ndi unarealize, haku anaitua MOI for nothing. That man was one of the most dictatorial presidents of the Republic of Kenya. And that's why I tell you. When you look at the attributes of your current president, Mr. William Ma, riding on the same nini. Hey, ni etisai, you know we live in the modern world, ambapo wezi feature bibi. Mm. Lakini uwa nalimalimu angumi yampa na pale. Eh, kuja na black eye kwa public, muna mona anakaa tuko finyika. Eh? But you know, it's life. And it, uh, th that is what comes with you being married to a man who is in power. Also, sap, I remind you that this is Celeb Corner KE. Make sure you subscribe. Let's link up in our next video. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, and share.
Niambieni, what do you think about what happened between the marriage of the late President Daniel Toro Teach Arab Moi and his wife Lena Tugo Moi? And remember, after Moi parted, parted ways with this lady, he never got married again. Yani yeye hakuoa tena. Aliishi hivyo mpaka kufa kwake. Aliamua atalea watoto na endelee kulea inchi na kutengeneza utajiri because you know the Moi family is the richest family in Kenya if you don't know that. For now nakamilishia hapo. Make sure una subscribe